Hi, this is Kevin Trainer. Uh, welcome to my introduction to uh, the course uh, IS594 Project Management. So this is uh, section uh, PJ of uh, IS594. And uh, this is being offered in the fall of 2023. So in this recording, I'm going to go through the sort of the information resources for our course and try my best to set your expectations about the course. So that's going to include our uh, Canvas site, which uh, you see on the screen right now, and the syllabus and the weekly schedule. Okay. So um, this, the first thing I'm going to kind of talk about is our Canvas site. I've organized this like I organize all of my Canvas uh, sites, but it's maybe a little different from the sites that you see in a lot of your iSchool courses. Um, the iSchool creates a template uh, for... Um, a Canvas course uh, sites that I think is a little uh, busy and hard to follow. So I've created uh, my own. And um, this uh, page that we see here is what Canvas calls a module page. And so the content is organized, organized into these blocks called modules. And I have uh, four of them. Uh, the first one is uh, kind of identifies the course and has some key information. The second one, uh, contact us, has information about me and, and the TA and how to contact us. Uh, the third one, submit assignments. Uh, it's going to have all the assignment activities uh, uh, to which you're going to submit your work. And then the fourth one, assignment solutions. Um, for some of the assignments, uh, uh, I may be publishing solutions that we'll discuss in class, in which case I will put them uh, there. OK? Um, so let's uh, start at the top, why don't we? So. Uh, again, this is for IS594 section PGA project management, which meets on Tuesday afternoons uh, on campus. Uh, there's a link here to the syllabus. So if we click through on this, we're going to come to a copy of the syllabus that's on a website. Um, which means that if I update the syllabus, which I will do, for instance, the teaching assistant is still a TBA here, um, uh, then I will replace the file on the website and this link will, uh, when you click on it, you'll get to the newer version, okay? Whenever I put up new uh, content, I try to announce it uh, with a, Canvas announcement. So if I were to update the syllabus, I would make a Canvas announcement. And we're going to come back to this and go through the details of, of the syllabus in uh, a few minutes. OK. Um, there's also a week, uh, a link here to the weekly schedule. Now, the weekly schedule is a web app that I created that presents uh, the content that we're going to cover and all the deadlines and such uh, throughout the course. And it's the, uh, it's the authoritative source on what we're doing and when things are due. And as you can just see, this uh, page that you come to is and index of weekly schedule uh, pages. So there's there's one uh, row in the table for each of the weeks of the semester. And you'll see that officially there are 17 weeks of the semester, although week 17 is all um, 
exams and we don't use that. So we're really going to be dealing with weeks one through 16. And one of those weeks, week number 14, is our Thanksgiving vacation. So of those 16 weeks, we're going to be uh, uh, teaching and learning in 15 of them. Okay. Um, when you click through on a page of the weekly schedule, uh, you'll see that uh, the weekly schedule is organized into essentially content blocks as well. And each uh, block represents an event that happens in our course that week. So the first uh, content uh, block is about the class that's on Tuesday afternoon from 12.30 to 2.30 in um, the LIS building uh, room 53. And um, so here's all the information about that class. And then on Friday, we have a uh, we have an optional lab session um, from two to three. And let me just make sure that's a mistake. Okay, it should be saying from three to four. Okay, if you go back here to the uh, you go through to the syllabus, it says that the optional lab session is on Friday from 3 to 4. So I'm going to update that content uh, before the day is out. And this is going to say from 3 to 4 on all of these. I apologize for the mistake. Oh, it does say from 3 to 4 up here, but I, I didn't change the content down here. Uh, and then this last note there's usually um, the hand in assignments for the week are usually due on Sunday at the very end of the day at 11.55 uh, uh, p.m. Is, is the weekly assignment uh, deadline. So because we didn't have any weekly assignments here, I've, I put a schedule note that says that fact. Okay, so that's, that's uh, kind of the uh, the third uh, piece of content that would appear. Okay, so I'm going to come back uh, before we're done. I'm going to go through the schedule for the first three weeks. I've got all the content up for the first three weeks of the schedule. I'm going to be putting up the rest of the weeks in mm, during weeks two and three. Uh, I'm going to make sure I get it all uh, correct. And there's a lot of things that need to be adjusted. Um, but it will be up pretty soon, okay? So that's what you can expect in the weekly schedule, and we'll go through the details of that before we're done here. Okay, so the next thing is please set your preferred name using the university self-service application. So I'm going to want to call you what you prefer to be called, and I'm going to call you what it says on Canvas and Zoom. And also, um, in these on-campus uh, courses, I've made up name tags um, that I'm going to ask you to wear. I'm going to wear mine. Um, so I can remember your name, and I can know who's uh, participating. So uh, I've already printed the name tags. Uh, but um, even if you haven't gotten to this uh, changing your name using the self-service application, um, uh, just uh, do that now. Do it as soon as you can. And then uh, in between week one and week two, I'll uh, make some uh, corrections on the name tags. So then we'll be calling you what you want to be called. Okay? So uh, please... Uh, please do this, okay? Um, the next thing is this uh, 
help in iSchool Quick Links. And this is the content from the template that the iSchool had for these Canvas uh, sites. This is the stuff that I thought um, uh, was really important to leave in. And so I've segregated a hole here in this little section. So uh, here's a lot of important resources that you're going to want to uh, find your way to. Okay. Uh, the next one is the open uh, discussion forum. Now we're going to do a lot of our uh, discussion in class. That's the bulk of what we're going to do. Okay. Uh, but this is a place where you can share things with your classmates um, online. Okay. And that and that's what to do, what to use this for. Um, the TA and I will visit this and comment as appropriate, but we won't be here all the time. And if you need our help with something, this isn't the place to get it. Uh, we have, uh, I have created a help desk for this uh, course, and there's a link here to get to the function where uh, I describe that, and we'll be getting there in a couple minutes. Um, Zoom meetings, this is an on-campus course, and so the classes are not going to be on Zoom. But the Friday afternoon online labs are going to be on Zoom. And uh, before we get to the first one, I'm going to have a list of all the sessions up here. And of course, when you go to log in, the session you're going to be looking for is the one that's going to be at the top of the list. Um, contact us is, is about, uh, is about me and it's about the, uh, TA. Okay. We're pretty close on announcing the TA. I hope to do that as early as, uh, tomorrow. Okay. And, um, uh, let's, uh, talk about how to, how to coordinate with us. Um, uh, we're not going to have open office hours, okay? We are going to have these labs, okay? Um, at the end of each of our classes, we're going to have some lab time, okay? And um, then there'll be the dedicated online lab on Friday afternoon. So this is a great time to come and to get help with uh, your assignment. Um, we're going to be doing a team uh, project, so forming teams, finding clients, um, pursuing projects, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you need to contact us outside of class um, and outside of the labs, the way to do this is not to use our email, but to use this help desk. Now, I've been using help desks to help the students in my classes for not quite 10 years. I think as of the summer, I've taught maybe 62 classes in which we use the help desk. And it's a really great way for my helpers and I to help you. Um, so I have I have a second a section here on Canvas where I describe how to use the help desk. But um, if you need help outside of class and labs, open a ticket on the help desk. If you need to meet outside of class and labs, uh, for instance, if you need an individual meeting, uh, just open a ticket and ask for an individual meeting. And remember to list the days and times that you're available so I can pick from them when I set the meeting up. Uh, these will probably happen on Zoom, although uh, potentially they could happen in person. But um, uh, most of these will happen on uh, Zoom. Um, so, using the help desk for this course, okay. Um, the 
the software that we're using for the help desk is new this uh, fall. I've been using uh, another um, software product um, up through the summer and the licensing uh, kind of ran out on that. And so I've uh, created this new trainer help desk. So if you click through on this, you'll come to the about page in the user guide and it does I think a pretty good job of uh, uh, describing it. Um, the, the thing that I really like about this help desk is that uh, you as a student don't have to log in to anything. So you don't need to create a login. You don't have to have an ID and a password to remember. Uh, you're just sending and receiving email. And the trick is to send the email to the right email account, okay? And we have a link down here, um, this uh, IS594 PGA section compose email. If you click on that, it's going to tell you exactly to what to put in your email, like what email account to send it to. There's one just for this uh, course. And uh, what to put in the subject line and what to put in the body and all those things. And then when you're ready to send, you can click on send and confirm. And it has some tips about uh, uh, confirming that your ticket was uh, created when your email was received and then once that's going uh, you can click uh, down here and learn some more about how to correspond with the help desk team that's a ta and i okay so uh i've designed this to be pretty easy to use and i hope it will be so uh, i'm interested in um, hearing how that goes for you all right so that's the help desk and then uh, submit assignments. Uh, we don't have any hand in assignments in the first three weeks, so we don't have anything up here, but these things will be uh, coming along. And um, I'm not sure whether we're going to have uh, assignments that have published solutions. I have that in some of my other courses, so that is uh, kind of a placeholder for this. Uh, the last time I taught this course, we did not, okay? But we'll see, all right? Okay, so that, that's our Canvas uh, page. Um, so let's go to the syllabus. Okay. So uh, this is project management, uh, IS5. 94 PJ. Um, I'm the instructor. The teaching assistant will be announced uh, very soon. Uh, the classes happen on Tuesday afternoon from 12:30 to 2:30 in room 53 of uh, the old high school building, the LIS uh, building. Um, looking forward to seeing you there. Um, the end of every class will have some lab time. So if you've got a question or problem, you can come up after class and, and I will help you then. Um, and then we have a dedicated one hour lab on Friday afternoon from three to four. And then um, we don't have conventional office hours. So uh, either you can uh, get help uh, during lab or you can open a ticket on the help desk. Uh, or if you need to arrange an individual meeting, just open a ticket on the help desk and arrange an individual meeting. Uh, contacting the instructor or the TA, this is the content, just the same uh, content that was on the Canvas uh, page. So it hasn't changed. 
Okay. Um, let's see. Course description is pretty broad. It's the first course in project management that covers both the traditional approach to project management, often called the predictive or the waterfall approach, as well as the more contemporary agile approach. This course is suitable for students interested in managing projects for libraries, archives, research centers, data science, information consulting, and software development. OK, so um, this would be sort of an interesting point uh, for me to say. I'm teaching two courses in the current semester. One is this project management course, and the other is it's, um, IS446, it, it, it's systems analysis and design. And they have a lot of overlap. They're not the same course. Oh, OK, there's a lot of uh, parts of them that are different, but they share a lot in common. And so, uh, I noticed that one or two people who are registered are registered for both of the courses. And um, I'm going to want you to come talk to me about that, OK? Because on one hand, this could be a great opportunity to, you know, to see something from two different uh, perspectives, the same thing from two different uh, perspectives uh, in the same semester. On the other hand, it, you know, it might be too much overlap for you. Uh, both of these courses have a, a team project. And if you take them both, you're going to be doing two team projects with two different teams. So you're going to, you're going to have to keep that in mind as well. OK. So um, uh, to get back to talking to everybody, though, um, um, this course is not only about software uh, projects. Although the Agile approach to managing projects uh, was really developed for software projects, OK? Well, some people believe it was mm, developed for product management. Maybe there are some uh, parts of that. There's a, a certain kind of Agile called Scrum that mm, a lot of the original thinking of it came out of uh, product management. Uh, but in terms of the real uh, proponents of Agile, uh, most uh, most of the Agile uh, most of the Agile point of view and most of the Agile uh, techniques were developed for uh, software development uh, projects. Um, so we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about uh, more uh, traditional approaches to project management and there'll be stuff here for everybody okay um i think that everybody at the high school should be enough interested in software development projects um that they're going to want to learn about agile okay um and even people who expect to go into software development there'll be enough to be managed that's not software development and software development organizations um, that you're going to want to know about the, the a traditional uh, a predictive uh, approach uh, to managing uh, projects. All right. So we're going to cover them both. And we're going to talk about how they're different, how they're the same, um, all those kinds of things. Um, I'm going to expect, um, uh, I'm going to expect everybody to be part of a project team. Now, in the approximately the first half of the semester, we're going to be mm, talking about project management, getting our head around it, all that kind of stuff. And we're also going to be forming teams, finding clients, selecting and approaching, getting ready to do a small project in the last half. So get ready for project, form project teams, get everything set in, you know, 
first half of the semester uh, actually do the project in the second half. All right. Um, I've been working with teams in this kind of way uh, where we we form the team and pick the project and all that kind of stuff in the first half and we did the project in the second half. I've been working with Oh, I've probably been doing this for maybe most of the 15 years that I've been teaching in higher education. And uh, it always works out. <laughs> okay, so I've had a lot of people say, well, we're going to be learning about it. We're going to be doing it in the same course. And da, 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 da. I've done this with hundreds of people. And we always find a project. And we always get it done, and it always leads to good outcomes, happy people, and a lot of learning. Okay, so even though, even if you hear this and go, Meh, maybe I'm worried about how exactly how we're going to get all this done, I promise you, we'll get it done. Okay. Um. When you look at the course topics, this is a combination of the topics in our two main uh, textbooks. Okay, so why don't we jump ahead to the textbooks? Okay, um, our main textbook is the Schwalbe book. Kathy Schwalbe um, has been writing project management uh, textbooks for a good, well, 20 years, something close to that. And uh, she said two lines of textbooks, and I've taught from both of them for a long time. Okay, and she's got one line of textbooks that's uh, project management for information technology projects. That's not the one that we're using here. And she's got this other line of textbook that this is the most recent edition of. That's an introduction to project management that's a little more uh, general. It's not so software development oriented. Okay. Um, I've taught uh, from this book, both in higher education and industry. I, I really like this book. And um, it's a most up to date uh, book. Okay. So I really like the author. I really like this uh, series of texts, the, um, the latest of which that we're using here. And I, I think she does an especially good job of, of uh, painting a picture of project management in a way that takes the traditional approaches and the agile approaches and puts them into perspective. Okay. So we're going to be covering a lot of chapters from this. Uh, the, the other text, the Leighton, Austin Miller, and Kynaston, which is Agile Project Management for Dummies. And I uh, apologize for the four dummies. Um, this is probably the most accessible book on Agile Project Management available. I've been using, well, I've used all the editions of this. I use the first, I use the second, I use the third. The interesting thing about this a book is, is that it's, it's not a university textbook. It doesn't promise to be balanced and fair. It proselytizes for the agile approach. They'll say, Thing. I mean, they have whole chapters that talk about uh, why the traditional approach to project management is a failure. <laughs> okay, this is not a, a balanced point of view. H however, it's a great representation of what agile people believe and um, the way agile people behave. And it's a good... Um, it's a good uh, kind of a manual to follow if you're going to take the agile pro uh, the agile approach to managing a project. Okay, so I really like both of these uh, books, but they play different roles. All right, so coming back to the topics, 
um, we're kind of interleaving these because we're, uh, we have a graduate course here, right? And we're not going to just believe whatever people say. We're going to look at the various things that people say, and we're going to discuss the hell out of it. Okay? Uh, and then you're going to come to your own point of view. Okay? Um, and that's going to be fun. So... Uh, that's how the, uh, that's how the list of topics uh, came. You can take any one of these uh, topics and it'll uh, tie back to a chapter or chapters in one of those uh, two books. Okay. Learning outcomes. Uh, understand the nature of projects and project management. Understand the differences between agile and the more traditional approaches, sometimes called predictive, sometimes called waterfall. Um, you know, uh, uh, Kathy Schwabe, I think, does a very good job of talking about the possibility that you might want to combine those two and create an approach that she calls hybrid, too. Understand the special requirements of managing a project in the information field, because I think that there are, um, and not only for software development, but information projects more generally. Identify and explain the key elements of the five project management process groups. That's from the more traditional stuff. Identify and explain the key elements of the 10 project management knowledge areas. That's from the traditional stuff. Uh, identify and explain the key elements of agile project management. And as a member of a small team, collaborate to manage and execute a small project. And again, a big emphasis here, okay? Uh, although some teams may choose to do a small software development project, um, it can be any kind of project, okay? And uh, people have taken this course in the past have done things, have had quite a few people who have had library jobs uh, or jobs in archives and stuff like that. And they've done things for their organization, right? And, and um, they've been all, all kinds of projects, okay? They don't have to be software development uh, projects. They can be though. Okay, talked about the required uh, text. Technology requirements, okay. You're going to do fine if you have a Windows or Mac uh, computer that has an up-to-date copy of the operating system in it, even if it's a number of years old. I've, I've had people who do fine with things that are four or five years old. As long as they've updated the software, we should do fine. Okay. For the most part, <clears throat> we're going to be um, uh, creating uh, documents and uh, uh, diagrams and doing stuff like that, that, that uh, are not going to be super uh, challenging. Some teams may choose to do a software development project as their team uh, project, in which case, well, a software development a project using the Agile uh, approach, it develops working software. So then people on your team are going to be able, are going to have to develop working software. Well, I can help you folks in the following way. Uh, I teach uh, two courses, uh, IS430 and 439, in which we use uh, tools like Anaconda and Python and uh, Python and PyCharm and Django. I can get you access to all of that stuff. And to the extent that you need other software, well, I can try to steer you to people to help to get that, okay? And uh, uh, of course, Whoever is on that kind of team needs a computer that can do that kind of work. Okay. But again, not everybody is doing software development uh, uh, projects. Right. 
Um, one of the real fun things about this particular course and the mix of people that we get into it is just hearing about all the projects that are so diverse. Uh, the next part here, the course schedule, this is just a link to our weekly schedule. So if you click on it, it should take you to the weekly schedule. It's that easy. Okay. And uh, now I got to get back to uh, this. Course elements. Readings from the textbook. There's a lot of readings and we're trying to compare points of view. So I want you to do the readings and do the readings before the day that we're going to, to uh, discuss them in class. Uh, lecture videos. Okay, I try not to lecture in class. Um, the Schwalbe book um, really lends itself to lectures. And so I'll probably have a recorded lecture for each of the, the Swabby chapters that we cover. Um, I, I'm going to be recording them fresh, okay? So they'll probably be coming out um, uh, right before we cover them. As for the, uh, the actual project management for dummies book, it doesn't lend itself to lectures. It's a very popular uh, kind of uh, conversational book about this uh, topic. And if anything, it kind of beats the topic uh, 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 to death. Um, so it doesn't need lecturing. Um, it's not going to add value. It'll only uh, detract. So I've been using some version of this book for well over 10 years, and I've never found a good way to, um, uh, to lecture on it. I think we do best to just uh, sort of open a page and sort of get into the discussion. All right. Uh, tutorial videos. Uh, there's two kinds of tutorial videos. I don't know that we have any software to install, but if if we have a particular piece of software to install, I'll typically uh, do a tutorial video on that. Um, the other thing is that uh, there are times when I have uh, some assignment that I want you to practice, and then I'll do a tutorial showing um, me kind of practicing on uh, something. As of right now, I don't have a tutorial video in this course, but I, I may have them. Practice quizzes are going to be uh, a pretty important aspect of this. Um, project management is, is a very high demand skill. And uh, one of the things that employers look for in project managers is um, uh, 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 demonstrated mastery of the subject uh, matter, OK? Uh, the Kathy Schwalbe book has pretty, pretty good coverage of all of the topics that you would need to know, for instance, to uh, pass the the uh, PMP uh, exam to become a a uh, a PMP certified uh, uh, project manager from. Uh, by the PMI organization. Now, in order to do that, one has to both uh, pass the exam and one has to be able to demonstrate that they have years of experience. So it's not only a matter of passing the, the exam, but a part of it is being able to pass the exam and being able to show that you've had this kind of uh, training. So, um, I've always found it helpful in this kind of course to 
um, to prepare people um, for this kind of exam by uh, having that be part of the course. And so there is a final exam uh, that yeah, it's kind of PMP exam like. It's maybe a little bit easier than the PMP exam, but not by much. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is as we go along, as we finish each of the chapters, I'm going to give you a practice quiz. You can take as many times as you like uh, to see how you do. Okay. And um, this really is an area where you need to master the language. Okay. Um, the PMI folks, I think, who do a really good job, PMI is Project Management International, what they've tried to do is they've tried to really raise the bar on project management uh, to have it be a profession like, oh, like the accountants have done for certified public accounting. And one of the, one of the key aspects of this is getting everybody using the same language for uh, the different things that we do and the different principles that we follow. And um, I think that PMI does a good job of this. The Cathay Schwab book, I think, does a good job of explaining the, the PMI point of view and the language. And so, the quizzes and the final exam are going to be on that material. And um, uh, the final exam and the quizzes allow multiple attempts. And the only thing that I ask is that you take the exams or the quizzes by yourself. Okay? I don't want anybody taking these things as a group. Okay? And... What I have found is uh, at an iSchool, when you give uh, people these kinds of uh, tests and you give them as many attempts as they like, that the scores are quite high. So that's the practice quizzes in the final exam. The, uh, the final exam will have about 100 questions on it. A practice quiz will have Mm, depends on how big the chapter is, but 10-ish, uh, 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 something like that. And again, I've got, I've got to pull these uh, together from the material that came from the Schwabi book because I haven't, uh, I haven't taught from the sh this Schwabi book from, from this uh, uh, quiz and exam uh, material for uh, a couple of years. So I, I've got to get the up-to-date versions. Uh, uh, done. But this will use the quiz uh, uh, feature of uh, Canvas. Uh, the team project, we're going to be talking about the team project a lot. Okay. So during the first half of the semester, you're going to be learning uh, fundamental project management skills and getting ready for the team project. Before you're ready to start the team project, you'll need to accomplish the following. You need to form a team of two to four people. You need to find a real world client that has a small to modest size problem or opportunity. The best way to practice these kinds of things that we're learning isn't to do something gigantic. It's to do something small. Uh, it's to give us the opportunity to talk through what's going on in a uh, proper context. Plan and execute a small project that addresses the client's problem or opportunity. While this can be an information systems project, it might be some other kind of project. Demonstrate that you're using the principles covered in the class while creating value for your client. I'll organize in class activities like breakout groups to help you find potential team members, identify clients, formulate projects, and get started. Okay, and again, we're going to get all that done in yeah, kind of weeks one through seven, and we're going to do the project in weeks eight through 16. Okay. 
Um, attendance. Okay. Um, it says here if if you miss a class, you can play the recording. But that was there for an online class. There is no recording of this uh, class. If you miss a class, well, you missed it. <laughs> so, um, participation. Um, that includes it, that's kind of speaking opportunities associated with class, introducing yourself in the first class meeting, making speaking contributions in class, uh, making chat uh, contributions online, that's not going to apply, presenting your work during class, that will apply, presenting as a spokesperson for your breakout group, that is going to apply. Okay, and I'll talk more about uh, participation points and how you earn them and how I turn that into a grade in a couple of minutes. Course grading policies. Okay, so I've got a bunch of policies here. Um, these have accumulated over the years as people have kind of misunderstood things. So I'm going to give you the highlights, but I want you to read through all of these. Uh, one, careful attention to detail. This is a detail-oriented activity, so you've got to pay attention to all the details of whatever the assignment is. Assignment resubmissions are not permitted after the assignment uh, deadline. So if we have some assignment and you're handing something in, uh, if you hand it in early and then you have uh, further thoughts, well, just if we haven't gotten to the deadline, just submit it again. We'll, we'll grade the most recent uh, one, but um, we're not going to have you uh, resubmit after the deadline. Uh, deadline extensions must be requested before the deadline. So... Um, if you believe that you have a good reason for a deadline extension, just open a ticket on the help desk and ask for it before the deadline. Uh, deductions will be made for late submissions, so uh, please hand things in on time. Uh, assignments submitted too late will not be graded, so... We definitely don't want people to wait until the end of the semester to hand things in, okay? Now, if you've gotten on the wrong side of this um, and it looks like you're going to lose the opportunity to get credit for an assignment, well, open a ticket on the help desk and make your case for leniency. Grading adjustments will be limited to automatic rounding. So I... I've got people who come to me at the end of a class and they say, well, if I just had gotten one more point or two more points on such and such an assignment, instead of getting uh, a, a B plus, I would be getting an A minus. Well, it's way too late for that. Okay. The only thing that we do uh, is on assignments and in the overall grade is that we round. So if your assignment or your overall grade is, is 81.4, well, then you're going to get an 81. If it's 81.5, then you're going to get an 82. And that's it. Uh, Regrading requests made in using the help desk will be given fair uh, consideration. So we got two cases here. One is, what if you handed in something late and then we missed it? We didn't uh, grade it. Well, open a ticket on the help desk and remind us that we've got to grade it. Uh, the other thing is, for each assignment that you have, you're going to get a number grade and you're going to get a feedback form, which is a PDF a document that shows you how we graded it and what our comments are. Okay, So if you read through our feedback form and you think we missed what you had there, you know, that, that we didn't quite understand it, you should have gotten more credit. Well, open a tip gate on the on the help deck, help desk, and make your case, and we'll take a look at it. Extra credit opportunities are not available. I don't do extra credit. Okay, so 
it's not worth asking. Um, expected grades for assignment submissions that meet all expectations is, is 95. So uh, most assignments have uh, are broken up into exercises and there are regular exercises and there's a challenge exercise. Okay, so if you do all the regular exercises and you meet all the expectations and that you hand it in on time and you name things the right way and you do everything, if you meet all the expectations, you'll get a 95. The only way to get 96 or 100 is to do the challenge exercise. Challenge exercises are a lot of work for the last five points. Um, and uh, typically, I give a little bit less help on them. Maybe I always uh, claim that I limit myself to, to hints, although I've been talked out of a lot of help in these things. Um, your participation grade would be based on participation points earned throughout the semester. So when you introduce yourself at the first class, you earn 10 points. Speaking during class two, chat uh, contributions during class is only for online classes. Presentation of your work during class, five points. Presentation as a spokesperson for your breakout group, five points. And uh, I just add these up as we go along, OK? Uh, and at the end of the semester, I grade it on the curve, OK? Now, if you earn fewer than 10 participation points, you wind up with a grade of 0, OK? Now, remember, if you simply show up at the first class and introduce yourself, you earn 10 participation points. Um, the other thing is I grade this on a, a curve. So the top half of the class gets between 90 and 100, and the bottom half of the class gets less. Attendance of class may affect your grade. Because if these uh, participation points are all earned in class, if you, get, if you don't come to class, then you can't earn participation points. Basis for determining grade. So the final exam will be 40% of the grade. The team project uh, deliverables, which will be forthcoming and there'll be instructions for, that'll be half the grade. And the class and group uh, contribution will be 10%. Uh, In this table of how we translate the number grade to the letter grade, uh, I've been using this for the 15 to 16 years that I've been at the iSchool, and uh, it's pretty standard. Now, uh, one more part about the syllabus that's important is uh, these iSchool and university academic uh, policies. On one hand, these are things are super important. So you have to understand them. On the other hand, they should be the same on every syllabus that you see. So maybe you do understand them already. OK, please read them. I'm going to go through some highlights. Please read these. If you have any questions, come to me. I'll help explain it. So. Incomplete grades are hard to get at Illinois, so if you think that might apply to you, make sure that you research this by clicking through on the links. Uh, iSchool Academic in Integrity Statement. Um, you're expected to hand in your own work, OK? And you're expected to not make your work available for others to copy, OK? Either of those two things can lead to big trouble, OK? Uh, uh, if you have any questions about what's allowed, uh, contact me. We'll discuss it. Statement of inclusion, we're very serious about everybody uh, feeling welcome and uh, 
uh, treated respectfully. And if you want to know more about that, well, you can uh, uh, click through on the the link here and you can certainly discuss things further with me. Religious observances. Um, you may observe religious holidays that are different from those of the university, in which case uh, you probably want to click through on the link here and follow the procedures. And accessibility, okay? Um, if you're already working with uh, the DREZ organization, the Disability Resources Educational Services organization, uh, you'll have a letter to share with me. So please uh, do that as soon as uh, possible. If you're a person who thinks you might uh, benefit from the services of an organization like uh, address and the accommodations that that might lead to. Certainly, I encourage you to talk to Dress. I think that they're great folks there, and I highly recommend them. Um, COVID-19 in the iSchool. So the university is not at high alert for COVID right now. But I'm at pretty high alert myself. I'm going to be wearing a mask. I uh, I would invite anybody who's opening, uh, who is open to the idea to uh, join me. And I just would ask that everybody do their best to uh, promote the public health. And that is the syllabus. Okay, so what does that leave? That leaves us um, the... Uh, the first three weeks of the um, weekly schedule. So let's look at week one again. Okay. Uh, week one, well, of course, we have this introductory lecture, which um, I'm hoping that you're going to play before our first uh, class. And then in our first class, we're going to do two things. One is uh, I'm going to have each of you introduce yourselves and talk about your background and your expectation. And the other is we're going to kick off a, a conversation about what are project managers and what do they do, OK? Um, this is the class in which we're going to try to set expectations and a point of view about being a project manager. And this is just a great way to get started. I've included a reading from this PMI organization, uh, which I think pretty highly of, that I think does just a pretty good job of getting you started about what skills a project manager might have, and what might they do? Okay. Uh, so uh, we'll have some conversation around that. Okay. Uh, there'll be a lab session on Friday. It's not from 2 to 3. It's from 3 to 4, as you can see up here. I'll get that fixed. There's no hand in assignment for week one. Okay. Um, then if we go to week two, week two, um, we're going to be talking about, um, we're going to read, uh, chapter one from the Schwabi book and chapters one, two, and three from the, um, actual PM for, for dummies book. And we're going to be talking about, uh, competing views. So we want to put about half of our time into talking about competing views. And we're going to uh, put the other half of our time into the first breakout sessions where we try to find uh, teammates. We try to find people who are interested in the same kind of projects. Uh, maybe find, if we have a client, we find people who need a client. Okay, if we need a client, we try to find people who have a client. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing there. Lab on Friday again from 3 to 4, not 2 to 3. 
no hand in for that week. Okay. And then the last thing I have the detail for is week three. And we're going to be doing Schwabi uh, chapters two and three. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, chapter two is project program and portfolio selection. And chapter three is project life cycles and initiating uh, uh, projects. Okay. And then again, um, uh, we're going to talk about those things. And we're also going to talk about, we're going to put uh, a, at least a half of the time or a major portion of the time into breaking out into groups and trying to find people with whom we'll do a project. Okay. And then lab on Friday, three to four, and no hand in for that week. So that's all the content that I have to go through for this introduction. Um, this is a fun course. I always, I always enjoy the projects. We get a lot of diversity in the kind of projects that teams find and do. And um, it's always a lot of fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you all on Tuesday afternoon. And until then, I'm going to say bye. Bye-bye.